what we want to talk about today and what, what our customers, our friends. How many of you guys at a cash site? How many pharmacists? Okay, good. So we're going to tell a little bit where we are today, <clears throat> where we're going, and the help I need from each and every one of you. The KIMPAC program. Do everyone in here know about the KIMPAC program? Okay. And we we'll also want to talk to you about our product concerns that we have, um, our sustainment process, and something that we're, we're doing and we haven't really had a chance with in Alabama, but I know I just met my best friend, Ms. Washington. I know after this conference, I know I look forward to working with each and every one of you guys to talk about our drop shipment process that we're doing around the country. I did some... Um, Question and answers. I know we're going to have some question and answers, but since I'm among family and friends, I know you guys are not going to beat me up too bad. So the KIMPAC program. So <clears throat> I was just talking to the gentleman at the table here, and he was saying, you know, he remembered seeing the KIMPAC uh, for the first time about four years ago, and then he remembered about two years ago that he saw a container. We have two different types of container. We have a hospital container that has enough treatments off in there for 1,000 uh, treatments, and then we have an EMS container. It treats 454 people. <clears throat> and we have another container, and the design is only in New York City. It's a WMD container, and it treats 908 um, people. So we do have three different types. We're really in the field. We just have two at all the other project areas. Um, <clears throat> it's really for, like I was telling people, when they first designed the Kempac container, it's probably really uh, to a response for a terrorist attack, a countermeasure, and stuff like that. However, I want you guys to take this note and really understand this. Is this not for a terrorist attack? As Mike could tell you, we've had incidents around the country over the last eight, nine, ten years. If you are at one of our sites, a hospital, EMS, or wherever you might be, and there's someone that's poisoned or whatever they might happen, you have our permission to break into that Kempac container to help save their lives. Okay? One more time. If you are in a situation and if someone has poisoned himself or whatever reason they might need and you might need that product to help save their life, break into that Kempac container and use that product to help save their lives. Did you all hear me? If you hear me, raise your hands. <laughs> all right. So just don't wait for... Uh, as they say, some terrorist attack to go up and say, no, we can't touch this, we can't use that. If you have a chance to save someone's life, please use it. <clears throat> KIMPAC program. It's really for, uh, we monitor all the containers that we have around the country. We have over 1,300 uh, sites that we have around the country that include Hawaii, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, um, different places around the world. Some of these locations are very, very beautiful. Can't wait to get to a lot of them see them for myself. Um, and it's forward deployed. So it gives, it's forward deployed so you can break into it and rapidly use it to help save lives. Again, it don't have to be for a terrorist attack, okay? They're monitored 24-7. So if you ever get a chance to go see a compact container, what we have, we have a sensor phone in there. And that is constantly sending information back to us at the CDC, monitoring the temperature. Because everything in that container, we have to ensure that it stays CGM compliant because we put in a shelf life extension program to extend the dates. We have them at fire stations. We have them at hospitals. We have them at emergency centers. We have them, you name it, around the country. So uh, it's, again, with your state rep, they decide within your state the location is kept. So if you're saying, I want a Kempac container, you really have to work that out with your state rep. Uh, their preposition, um, we own them, as they say, federally owned. However, when it's time to use it, you just take what you need out of there. We're going to contact you right after, because when you take the door off and break the seals, it's alarm. Handle your business. But someone is going to contact you and ask, what did you take out of there? And for what reason, you're going to have to send like an after action report to us. Okay? And, and don't use, it's, it's not really intended to be your first line of defense in all cases. You know, you should have some of these items already um, in your state. Like we were in um, Tennessee last week, and we're noticing that the Duodo Atnas that Meridian recalled four or five years ago, that some of the sites are now receiving those items. 
So those are the things that you need already for your state to be able to use prior to breaking a compact container. One more time, though, if you don't have that item and you need to save someone's life, please break into that container. As you can see from the map, we're all over the country. Those numbers represent how many containers that we have within those states. It's 1,974 containers that we have and that over at 1,300 sites around the country. Over $200 million worth of medical supplies that are maintained in those sites in the CAMPAC program. For the SNS, this is a side note, we have over $7 billion worth of uh, countermeasures and medicine um, uh, in our SNS program to help save lives. Again, it's pre-positioned everywhere. We use them for different things, for different support. So, um, and with the Super Bowl last year in California, they contacted us and said they wanted to move the containers uh, close to where the Super Bowl was. No problem. We'll coordinate that in advance. The state is responsible for paying for the transportation of the movement of that item for those different events. We do NASCARs, different events like that, the RNC, the DNC, and every year the State of the Union addressed by the President, we support that as well. Now this is probably really going to hit home to everybody. <clears throat> so the product that we bought, especially the auto injectors, it, are you guys all aware that the auto injectors, uh, Meridian is the only company in the country that make the auto injectors. And they haven't really produced any in the last four or five years. And those that they did produce, they had a recall on the do it dot Atlas. So can you imagine they owe all you, the customers, then they owe the DOD, they owe the State Department, Secret Service, and they owe, by the way, they owe the CDC. So it's put us in a really of a bind here this last 18 months, I guess, Mike, of product shortage and um, uh, uh, strong source of supply. And so we've really been scrambling. So what we had to do in the meantime is really, as the stuff was expiring, we haven't been able to replace it. And we had, for the Chef Life Extension Program that's approved by the FDA, we never really tested anything beyond the fourth and fifth time. We're now testing the product for and the fifth time. It's still failing through attrition, and so we, it left us in a mad scramble that we're not being able to give everyone their full allocation. However, you know, good news, like they say, a new day, good news come in the morning. What we had just recently was over 1,800 cases of the uh, 0.5 atropine milligram passed the FDA shelf life. So we're going to be able to get those back out to the field real soon within the next uh, four to six weeks. We had over 624 cases of the one milligram atropine to pass the FDA uh, shelf life extension program. We're going to be able to turn those around and get those out to the field. Then we had over 2,000 cases of the two pound, which is a real key ingredient in, in the containers to pass, and we're going to be able to get those back out to the field. What we ask, and it's going to be a little different that you're going to see, is with the two pound, we only have one relabeler, and all this product has to be relabeled and approved by the FDA once it's extended. So for the two pound, what you, we requested is that expiration date that's currently on there is going to stay on there. But we're going to provide those sites that do not have uh, two pound and need two pound. We're going to provide you, I call it a good doctor letter. It's really a health care provider letter signed by the FDA saying this product is good to this expiration date, and it's going to be like 2019. And we're doing that. We're doing that to ensure if I try to get it relabeled, Mike and I had a conversation with the vendor. He said it would take 10 to 12 weeks. In a lot of cases, you guys already have no two pound in your containers. I'll try to turn it around as soon as possible, and I don't want to wait. So we make sure everybody know, Ms. Washington, as soon as that happened, make sure that you receive the letter, and then you better send it out to everyone in any of your CAS sites within your state. Once they get that two pound, that letter will be that it will be along with that shipment, and then we'll make sure they put it, everybody put that in the pouch. Because I know as you respond to emergency, you bug out first, and then you look at the expiration date, and you realize it's expired. But that letter is going to cover it because the FDA has extended it. But we won't have to go back and relabel We're not going to relabel that two pound. It's not going to be relabeled because it's just not enough time in order to get it to you. So this put us in a mad scramble. 
And as I stated before, Mr. Burrell, our director, he did something thinking outside of the box. He know that there's other countries around the world that uses auto injector. It was a company in Israel called Rapa. So he was able with our contracting officers go over there, meet with them, and we're now being able to procure a 0.5 atropine, one milligram atropine, and a 2.0 atropine from Rapa. We received our first shipment in a week ago of the uh, 0.5s, over 300 cases. We'll be having enough cases of the one milligram for the rest of the year coming in. So everybody, by the end of this year, you're going to have your um, 0.5s here in the next four to six weeks. But by the end of this year, everybody's going to have their one milligram in their containers. So you're going to be back up to full, your full allocation real soon with the two pound, the 0.5 atropine, and the one milligram uh, atropine. Sustain it. <clears throat> you know, in the past, you would ne normally wouldn't see us anywhere from 12 to 18 months. But the, uh, the 80 other product have us coming out more frequently. Miss Washington probably seen us in the last 12 to uh, 18 months. We've probably been in her state about four or five times. It is uh, uh, really based on the dating of the product. And we appreciate your patience and your understanding, but we have to work with the hand we're dealt. But when they get better, I promise you, you won't see us as often, uh, but we can still be here to support you. And normally when we put in the container, it lasts about 18 months, the dating that we have on the product. And if we didn't have the shelf life, pro, shelf life extension program by the FDA, those Kempac containers would be done. We wouldn't have any product to do it. So we're really uh, glad that we have the shelf life extension program through the FDA. Again, Mr. Burrell, he, it's, it's a choke point, though, at the FDA as well. And our director, Mr. Burrell, he's going to meet with the FDA to see can we get more bodies and more labs online to test this product and also have someone to work on it. So he is, um, he is doing, he rocking and rolling behind the scene to ensure that we have, you know, I, don't, I know people don't like when I say this, we have enough dope to get to the dock, and that's what he's working on. So uh, hats off to him. I already spoke about the number of sites we have around the country, how many containers, um, and this aging product. Some of the, um, if you guys noticed the first dates that it expired on the Mark 1s, we up to 10, 11 years. On the atropines and stuff, we up to 9, 10, 11 years when we originally bought the items, and that's where we're at. So when we get a chance, we have money set aside uh, that we already have with the, um, that's why I was surprised last week when we were in Tennessee and they got there and do a dope atmos. And we have $17 million at the vendor, and he haven't filled our requirements. But when I go around to different states, I see them getting their product in. So I have to bring that up with our director. It's time to have another discussion with uh, Meridian Pfizer. All right. Now, this is, uh, this is what I really want to talk to you, talk with uh, your customers about drop shipping. So one of the things that we notice about 16, 17 months ago, with the product expiring the way it was, how can we be at 1,300 sites uh, all at one time? It's impossible. We can't do it. We cannot do it. Uh, we only have a staff in Kempac of 22, 23 personnel, so it's no way possible we could do that. I was telling the gentleman sitting at the table, it takes seven weeks to do Florida. It takes about eight weeks to do California. Texas takes about eight weeks. And so when you start lining all this time up, the personnel that we have, they spend over um, four or five years and one year on the road. So we have to find a better, more efficient way to do this. So how can I best support you all at once? Being that with the auto injectors, the mandate that I have is to keep it in a container within 60 days of the expiration date. In most cases, we're now leaving it in a container. If it expires 31 July, it's staying in the cont container until like 31 July. And then we ask for it to be removed that first week in August. Ensure that you have something in order to do your job. So one of the things we came up with was drop shipment. So we use this term drop shipment. It's no different what you see that those of you that work in hospitals on a daily basis. It's your prime vendor coming into your hospital. It's your McKesson, your Cartner, your Baxters coming in and bringing supplies. It's you at home ordering something on Amazon today and getting it tomorrow. It's you at home ordering clothes, rings, and hair products that when you get those, make that order, it comes in tomorrow. That's what drop shipping is. It allows us to get those sites in 
the product in. You, we put in order today, just like the boxes that I have over here, and we send it to you through our transportation carrier. For instance, today, we would ship this out with, from our site in Atlanta. It would make the 3 o'clock shipment, and it would arrive in Alabama tomorrow at 1030 at those different sites that we have. And we're asking you, well, once it does that, to go ahead and rotate the product out. That's drop shipment. That's all it is. You know, we, we can try to put a bigger spin on it, but that's all it is. It's able to rotate the expiring products out and place a new product, and, but we need your help in doing it. We tested this program in 2015. We used the state of Utah, didn't use, and uh, uh, worked with the state of uh, Utah, and we said, let's test this and see how it worked. And so we've been doing drop shipments ever since, and as of date, we shipped out more than 15,000 boxes to the different uh, sites around the country. And so we have 52 project areas that we're working with, and it's a total of 62 project areas. Our project areas are not the same like FEMA's, you know, so we're rocking and rolling. We're getting there. We're testing and we're learning. We have what went best, best practice, questions and answers. We put on webinars and different things and try to give everyone a comfort level on how to, uh, what to expect and how this can best serve all of us. So in most cases, instead of coming out, Mike and I, like we are now, we would walk into your hospital, we would bring the boxes in, we would have the truck, and we would say, good morning, Ms. Washington, how are you doing? We're here for the Kempac program, and what we would like to do today is rotate the product that you have out and replace it with new product. We're going to sit there, we're going to laugh, and we're going to joke with you. We're doing the work, you're looking at us, smiling, going, uh-huh, uh-huh. All you need to do now, ma'am, is just verify the product that you have and then sign it. And okay, see you next year, or see you again when the product expires. So what we're doing a little different with the drop shipment, instead of seeing my beautiful ball face and coming out and shaking hand and talking to you about your family and friends, how your kids doing in college, how your wife is doing, how you looking great, you lost some weight, what we're going to do is just ship some of the product to you directly, you know, and work with you closely. You're going to know what, what you're going to get, you're going to know when it's going to arrive, and you're going to know all that information, and then we're just going to work with you closely to return the product as well. By doing this, well, the big thing that we notice, it maximizes shelf life of the items. In the past, we have been taking items out of the containers up to six, seven months with an expiring. That's not good business. If that was your company doing that, you're wasting money. That's not good business. You know, um, what I do for a living is logistics, supply chain management. That's not what you do. You leave the product in the container until it, to that expiration date to get the maximum amount of that item. So that's what this drop shipping allows us to do. So we did, a, we done a couple things. So we went through this again. We've shipped over 15,000 boxes over the last 18 months. And we put on a webinars, we put on a, a, went out state to state and different sites to sites. So we came back with the instruction uh, that we have. The other thing too, Mike, uh, about a, two months ago now, Mike went out to one of the sites and they, they conducted a training video and they filmed it and it should be coming out very soon, the training video that we have that we can send to everyone who's gonna take part in the drop shipments. So normally what we're gonna do with the drop shipments is gonna be a little bit different but still stay the same. That difference and stay the same is 90 days prior to coming out to this great state of Alabama, we're gonna call Miss Washington. Good morning, Miss Washington, how are you doing? Fine, hey, I'm doing great. Good to hear your voice again. We're gonna be coming out in 90 days to replace some of the product that you have in your states and what we'd like to do is coordinate with you at this time, uh, the sites we're gonna go and let you know. She's gonna say fine, you know, we was looking at that, the product expiring, great, great, great. 30 days to the items expiring, we're coming out to your state, we're gonna give you another call. Good morning again, Ms. Washington, how are you doing? I haven't talked to you in a couple of months. We're gonna be coming out on the first week of July to your sites, and these are the sites that we're coming to. You might wanna coordinate with all your CAD sites to let them know that this, you know, we're gonna be sending these items out to you and to make sure someone's available. If they're not available during that time, please let us know and we can work and switch some of the dates up for that product coming out. So one week prior to the shipment, we're gonna call her again. Good morning, Ms. Washington, how are you doing? You're looking great. So, 
At that point, we're going to tell you what product that's coming out, what's the dates, and what we ask, too, is that you, as a state rep, all the sites that's going to be receiving product on that teleconference, we really would like for those CAS sites to be on that teleconference. That way they know what's coming, what's the date, and product, how many boxes, and what anything, if they have any questions or concern, we can answer it at that time. We found out through this trial and error, when if you do it that way, it worked best. If we just allow the state, I'm not saying anything about I know Ms. Washington is not that way, but some of the states, they said, no, we just want you to call us directly. Then those CAS sites was not aware of what was coming. We don't want to do that. We want to set this program up for success, not failure. So this part is real simple. We're gonna, we already made the calls. We already know what's coming. So when the shipment arrives, we use different transportation carriers too. So don't, we'll let you know in advance who it's supposed to be. And if, we're going to let you know too if there's any control items, okay, on that shipment. You know, when you get ready, we're going to tell you when you receive it, they're going to let you know in advance. We're going to also ask for those different sites. If Mike is at the hospital in uh, Cedar Grove, we need Mike information. We need his uh, phone number. We need his email address because we're going to load that in the system. And every time that we send, um, we pick that up, it's gonna, he's going to get a notification. He has a shipment coming. He has a shipment coming, and this is the time, and it's supposed to be arrived. Just like when you get a notification when you place an order online. On that right there, one of the biggest things, once you get your shipment, it says stop and uh, before proceeding, please read. So if I was to turn that envelope over, that's what it says on the back of that envelope. But I, I have it that way because I want to show you something as well. That's that temp tail. So every shipment that we send and, and also that we receive back, we have it a temp tail. And all we ask you is do not touch it, do not handle it, because by ensuring that the temperature uh, remains within CGMP, we know that product is good and can remain in the shelf life extension program. Okay? And these instructions are really clear. It tells you everything. It tells you it's going to be a new state loan agreement in there. And if there's any control items, it's going to be a CTL, a custody transfer form. Um, it's going to be return shipping labels. As I stated before, that uh, temp tail is going to be in there. We're going to send you a tape to seal up the boxes that came in there. Um, this instruction is also going to tell you the number of boxes that you have. So when you receive it, as it says here, right there in column G, it's going to tell you the number of boxes you have. And it's going to say that you were supposed to receive six boxes on this shipment. If you look at that, and right, right off the bat, it's, you only got five boxes or four boxes or n something's wrong. Stop what you're doing right then and there and call your regional coordinator, okay? If the boxes look damaged, beat up, or destroyed, stop right then and there and call your regional coordinator. We can open it. One of the issues that we had too early on, it, you know, I worked in the hospital before where I was in medical logistics, and one of the things that we do, when the boxes came in, the outer box, we just, we opened up the box, cut up the box, and got rid of it, and then we took the supplies to the pharmacy at different areas. We're asking you not to cut up that box. That's the same box that you're going to return the product in. And so that was some of the issues that we had. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. The shipment is going to normally come. So wherever you at, if you normally get a FedEx shipment, a UPS shipment at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at your facility, that's the time that this shipment is normally going to come as well. Um, so we ask that once you get this shipment, we're going to coordinate it in advance. And those dates that you're supposed to get, it, again, if you had a shipment that was coming in today, the Kimpack container is going to be disarmed. And so when you take the door off and open it, our maintenance personnel is not going to get a signal that someone's going into the container because we know that you're doing the rotations during this time. We're going to ask that you break the green seal. And you should always, if we at a CAD site, you have the key. All right? And when we do that coordination that she's shaking her head, yes, you have the key. But when you're ready to do that coordination, ship it out. For some reason, if you cannot find the key, let us know on the phone, and we'll make sure you get shipped the key as well, okay? Is this, again, identifying what's expiring. You have all the instruction. We're going to replace the 2-pound. We're going to replace the 0.5 atropine. We're going to be replacing the 1-milligram atropine. You're going to have the new product, and you're going to have the, the product that's expiring already in container. We ask that you just rotate it out. Just do that shuffle. All right? 
We also, on the compact containers and in the shipment, we enclose a uh, color-coded visual diagram to show you where things go. If anybody can tell me who hands the, that is in that photo, I'll give you $2, a $2 bill. No takers? No, I have big hands. Real big hands. <laughs> okay, say <save> $2. <laughs> And we ask that you now seal it. And the seal is going to be in the uh, envelope, the new seal, and it's going to have the information you need to write. So if you did a, a state loan agreement before, it, you did just like the same thing. We normally did it. We normally wrote this information on there. Now we just ask you that you put that on there and return everything back to us. You have to sign a new state, uh, state loan agreement in the CTF. We ask that you sign and print. We're finding that some of our customers are just signing on and we can't read their handwriting. So we ask that you sign and print and all the paperwork is two locations for you to do that. And you place the original back in. We get the original back. You make enough copies for yourself. If it's a requirement that your state, uh, state POC has a copy of it, then you have to make a copy for them. You also have a copy that you put on the door, on the sleeve, and you sign us back to original. If you want to keep a copy somewhere else, you can as well. We remove the return label, put it, place it directly over the label that we sent it to you on. So that way it won't be any confusion. If you don't do that, it might come right back to you. Okay? We've had that to happen. Place it directly on the label that you use to return it. Again, please do not touch the temp tail, that envelope. Make sure it goes back in box one. We have people tuck the temp tail out and put it in a container. Please do not touch the temp tail. Because now that shipment that came back to us, we have to quarantine that product we cannot use. And as you guys all know, a case of two pounds costs $17,500 $17, for one case. All right. So we just lost $17,500 by doing that. Close and tape the shipping boxes and place the, original, uh, place the return label on top of the original shipping label, just like I instructed. And if you're at a site that does not have a reg, uh, regular um, pickup, please let us know because we can work with you that we can um, call our a vendor and they would have come out and they would uh, ship it back. The shipping to and from is no cost to the customer. We're paying for that. Uh, the tape, no cost to the customer. The boxes, no cost to the customer. We're just working directly with you to make sure that you can have product to help save lives. The other thing that we ask as well is this. If we shipped a product out to you yesterday or today and you receive it, and if you're unable to rotate the product in a container during the, uh, today or tomorrow, please let us know. Please let us know. And, and we understand, you know, pharmacy busy days and busy hours, we understand that. So then you just let us know, hey, hey, Mike, hey, Dale, hey, Carl, or whoever you're talking with, I'm not able to ship the product back on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, and we're going to ship it back Monday. Okay. Now we have to ensure that that following Monday, the containers again are uh, disarmed and you can rotate the product out. And we're just trying to get the product back in a, in a reasonable time frame. Because what we're trying to do is hurry up and turn the product around and make sure we have everything from the state. So one of the things that we're working on, as I said again, we're updating our uh, memorandum of agreement. We're doing an instruction video that we will have out to the field soon, ready for print posters and instructions. So let's take the state of Alabama. We've never done a drop shipment here. So that first time, Ms. Washington, after this meeting, she come up and she jump up and down and say, Dale and Mike, you know what? We can do this. Let's do this. Let's go for it. Okay. We're going to set up a time. And like we said before, that 90 days, 30 days, one week in advance, we're going to look at that. So this, the day is May, what, 24th, 25th? I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> we're not going to do this one June. We're not going to do it one July. We're going to look at a later period of time that we do it. And then when we do this for the very first time, we're going to send out personnel. So we're just not going to leave you high and dry. We're going to send our personnel to show you, give you hands-on training. We're going to send you the instruction video in advance. We're going to have a teleconference. And if you look at our SharePoint, we have instructions out there how to do this. So that very first time, if Ms. Washington agrees for the state of Alabama, we're just not going to ship you product. We're going to send our personnel out, and we're going to work with you. It's going to almost look like a regular sustainment they're going to be showing you. So at this point, we can ask, 
would you like to do the hands-on or the still let us do the hands-on? But we're going to use that as a training opportunity for, we call it a drop shipment with personnel to those states that are coming on for the first time to ensure that they have any issues, any concerns that they might have, we can address it right then and there. All right? 